Hola, hola, hola a todos en este Alo Copywriter tan especial. Ay, estoy con Daniel Strausser, está en Australia, es por la tarde allí, aquí es a la, son las 9 de la mañana, esto es muy loco. Y nada, estoy súper feliz de tenerle aquí, que tengo un montón de cosas que preguntarle, además. Si no sabes quién es, no sé en qué cueva has estado todo este tiempo. Él es el creador de Persuasive Page y de Parallel Sequence. Y claro, ha roto internet, es trending topic y aquí lo tengo, como no podía ser de otra manera. Hello, Daniel. Hola, soy Daniel. Yo no hablo español. <risa> Pero you speak Japanese. How's that? Hey, sabe todo yo. Oh God. Ah, yes. Let's stick to English. Yeah, sure. I, I think it's better. Okay. Um, you, I don't know when you started with this persuasive page thing. How long did you start with this? I started my own email list this year in 2020. <laughs> This year, just this year, I have been working for, for clients. I know nobody else but you can see, Marina, but this, yeah. this client, this is a very famous book in Australia. Yeah. It's called The Barefoot Investor. And I worked with him for four or five years, but I was always behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So nobody knew who I was. I'm mm -hmm. always behind the scenes, writing things, working for him. I never get any credit. He's famous. I'm not. So... <laughs> In and you right now year. are famous. <laughs> well, well, well. This year in 2020, I thought I need to do my own emails. I need to do my own thing. So back in, in March, actually, in March, I started writing my own emails. So it's only been nine months, but it's been a very, very, a very big nine months for me. God, but you started in the middle of the pandemic thing? <clears throat> That's because my you have time or something? <laughs> My, no, no, no. Okay. So in Australia, we never really got locked down where I am in Perth. We, we haven't had any lockdowns because we're very isolated. Never. The coronavirus didn't really come here. So everything's open. But so I, I wasn't locked down. But I, uh, my, my first email actually was about people buying toilet paper. And in my, in my very first email in March, I, I announced Market Detective, which is my course, which I just released nine months later. It took nine months. But my first email was, hey, everybody, I think I'm going to make a course. Who wants, you know, does anyone want to pre-order the course? <laughs> And I talked about people buying toilet paper. I was like, people say that they, they don't want to buy toilet paper, but they are. So this is why you need market research. So this, that's just a funny story. That, uh, that's how long it's been. Yes, it was the start of the pandemic. Uh, I, I started my own business. And again, I have been writing for a long time, just not for myself. I'm writing for everyone else. So I just started for myself this year. Oh, much. That's amazing. I guess you grew so fast. Because how, yeah, yeah. we have this uh, late night show here in Spain. This is La Resistencia. This, the host is always asking for, uh, you know, the, the question is, the, you know, it's, it's a little bit irreverent question to this famous, uh, you know, uh, guest. And, and he always say like, how, how many money have you in your uh, bank account? You know, and that's not the same because I know you're rich right now <laughs> after starting your program. <laughs> But uh, how many people have, if I have in your list? Can you say that? Right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, well, I, I don't like to give away too much specifics. I have, I have less than 2,000 people. I'll tell you that. It's okay. still relatively small. Okay. Um, but it's when I started, I had 40 people. Oh, like me? In March, I had 40 people. Like now me? I have, I, <laughs> now I have over 1,000. Okay. So it's, it's been a very big year of growth. There are some... Um, I see them. There are more well-known copywriters on my email list. Oh, God. They use, they use their personal email or they don't put in their full name, but I know who they are and they join quietly to try and watch my welcome sequence. So it's, it's not a huge list because I email every day and I always, I kick people off. If they're not reading, I kick them off. If they get annoyed, they, lie, they leave. If they annoy me, I kick them off. So it's a very small list, but it's very, very engaged. 
So I like to keep it. I like to keep it tight. But I don't like bragging about the numbers. To other no, that's something something to to understand a little bit better. You know how yeah. are you managing your business? <laughs> Because you know, it's the people breach. That's the problem. <laughs> Okay, and um, let me take. Okay, how do you get to the parallel sequence? That's your idea, or you're um, inspired by something, or whatever. Tell me. Yeah. So what? What I, I first didn't. I didn't come up with the parallel welcome sequence all at once. Mm -hmm. So first, what I did is I got my best emails and I put them all together, and I came up with the idea of the time travel remote, which is where you click the button and you can jump to the next email straight away. Now. That was not my idea. Other people have done that mm -hmm. before. And I, I will admit that. I, but I called it a time travel remote because it's fun. And I like, like to do fun click, things. Like click movie? Yes, it's, it's it's something yeah. like that. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you jump forward in time. Yeah. And I thought I like to do fun things, exciting things with my emails. Because I think everyone else is so boring. Everyone's so boring. They're so serious. They write for old people. And it's just all these tips and here is today's tip. And I think this sucks. I want to have fun. I want someone to laugh. So I, I say, well, I'm not going to call it a link. I'm going to call it a time travel remote. That's perfect. It blew and, my mind. <laughs> and that was working very well. And then I thought every time someone clicks that link, they have to go to a web page. And right now they just go to the same web page 15 times. And I thought that's really boring. Why can't I make that better? And then I realized why it was really hard. I went to write a new page for everyone. And it's like, oh, there's yeah. so much work. So, so many things I have to write. And setting it up in my email server is so difficult. There are so many complex parts and it's always breaking every day. Today, people email me like, oh, this email is not working. Uh, can you help me? So I'm always fixing it because it's so complex. But when I finished it, it was so much fun. You know, you could go jump back and forth between the pages and it was this new story and everyone loves it. People would write to me and they say, I've never seen anything like that. And I'll be honest with you. I first didn't think it was special. I showed it to my friend and I said, hey, check this out. And he said, you need to come up with a name for that. And I said, why would I need, why would I need a name for that? It's, it's just, it's, it's just not anything special. I just had, had a dumb idea. And he said, no, you invented something new. You need to name it. And I was like, uh, okay, I guess I could call it the parallel welcome sequence. And he's like, write a blog post about that. So I did, I wrote a blog post about how it worked and I asked my list to share that post and it exploded that I actually had about 400 people before I shared that. And my list doubled in one month when I published that because everybody was sharing it. So I didn't even realize it was that special. I just thought, oh, it's just me being silly, but everyone else loved it. So uh, it, it, it ended up very, very good. Yeah. You know, you, you know that you're in Spain was trending topic. And many Spanish uh, copywriters, you know, like they blew their minds and started to follow you. <laughs> and and I I wrote this I read this email from this Spanish girl, say you know telling you something like you have to write in Spanish, and that's so hilarious. What's what that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So she she emailed me, and in the first email. <laughs> She joins my email list and the very first email she says, can you please write in Spanish? Because I am a screenwriter and I'm busy and I don't have time to translate your emails. Hello, Karen. I, said, well, <laughs> I call her Princess Paella. I'm just very mean to Spanish. Because Paella is the only Spanish food that I know. Paella, paella, paella. Paella, paella. 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 In, yeah. in Australia, it's paella, paella. Um, paella, mate. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That's another. And you, you, that's, they invented yeah. something new. Pa, pa, yeah, what's that? Yeah. Paella. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, I can't believe you would ask me to do that. And then she said, you're emailing me too much. I, the very first day, the very first day, she says, can you please, I don't have time to read every day. So can you send them one time every week? And I was like, get out of here. Who are you? 
why did you even join? Kick, kick her but, ass but out. I have, I have to say, on the whole, I am very grateful to, to all the Spanish copywriters. I, I saw ad several weeks ago, all these Spanish copywriters coming in. I was like, is What's this happening? a mistake? I, th I thought the email thing was broken. I thought it was just saying, you know, there was something, all their Robots IP. Robots or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought there's a glitch and it's saying everyone is from Spain. And then they start emailing me and they're writing in Spanish. I'm like, what's going on? I have to go to Google Translate and translate their messages. <laughs> they're like, hola. I, I don't know. I don't know what they say, but all these things in Spanish. And I'm like, I have to translate it in Google. And then I write my message and I translate it back to Spanish and send it. Maybe I should do that. You took the time for that? <laughs> Because for the first email, in the first email, I say that I will email people back. So I just oh. do that for one. But I'm not having any long conversations in Spanish. But in general, Spanish people are very good. They, um, they, they, they enjoy it a lot. I'm very, I'm very glad that Spanish people know about my emails. Yeah, we are super curious about your uh, parallel welcome sequence and everything is around your business as a copywriter and your story. Tell us about your story because it's amazing how you become a copywriter. Tell us. Right. Well, I, I was an engineer. Mm -hmm. I graduated in electrical engineering. I got very good marks. And I worked at Chevron, the American oil mm -hmm. and gas company, Chevron. I worked mm -hmm. at this island mm -hmm. offshore of the coast of Western Australia. So I had to get on a little plane, a little rattly plane and fly for two hours on this little tiny rattly plane and land on an island, on an island. And they had quarantine. It was a nature reserve. You couldn't bring food. You couldn't bring stuff. They, they inspected your boots When you got there, they inspected all your shoes and your bags. It's very biosecure. Like in customs and, in Australia, right? <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's the yes, same. like in customs, but even more, even yeah. more. So it was, it was very, very remote. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for 12 hours a day for 28 days in a row. Wow. Every day, 5 a.m. at the desk, 5 a.m. work until 5 p.m. Every day for four weeks, no days off. And I do that every month. And it was crazy. And one day I was, I used to follow a marketer called Ramit, Ramit Sethi. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know him. As yeah, well. I know, I know, I know him. Yeah, okay. Ramit Sethi. And he had a contest, a copywriting contest, because he, at the time, it was 2015, he was launching his new course, his mm -hmm. copywriting course. And he had a contest. He said, you write one sales letter about my course and the winner gets to speak to me. And I thought, well, I don't even know what copywriting is, but I'll try this. I, I Googled it. What is copywriting? What's a sales letter? I was like, okay, I can write a letter. And I wrote something. It was called How I Got My Wife to Let Me Spend $200 on One Book. And it was a story about how I bought one of Ramit's products. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that. And it was very bad, but I won. I remember I was sitting there at my desk. I had to run out to the field, to the, to the plant, to inspect some cables. But I'm sitting there waiting, 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 waiting. And he's like, and the winner is Daniel Throssell. And I, I'm in the middle of the office. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> And everyone looked at me, I'm like, nothing, nothing, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I nearly <laughs> fell off my chair. Um, <laughs> so I, I got to speak to Ramit later on. And then I went on Upwork. I, mm -hmm. You know Upwork in Spain? Yeah, I know, it? I know. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's not so popular here because, you know. No, it's not everybody, popular here. Yeah, it's, it's not everybody popular dropping here. the rates and it's like, a, let the Hunger Games begin. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same in, in the English speaking world. But I, what I did is I went on Upwork and I mean, I had a testimony. Ramit said very impressive. So I wrote yeah. very impressive. But also I would find a job. And when I saw a job, my first ever job was for a company that sold beard oils. Like if you have a beard, yeah, you yeah. put this oil on your beard. Oh, right? God. I didn't know. As you see, I have no beard. I've never had a beard. So it's very funny that I would did that. I did that. But he had a job. He said, we need nine ads for beard oils. And I was like, I don't know anything about beard oils. But what I went and I looked up beard oils and I wrote ads for a fake beard oil. I made up an imaginary beard oil and I wrote an ad about it. And I said, here's my sample. Look what I have in my portfolio. He didn't know I just made it up. I just said, look what I've got in my portfolio. Here's another ad that I wrote. 
And he said, I can't believe I found a copywriter who's worked on beard oils before. I'm going to hire you right now. <laughs> But that's amazing. It, well, yeah. So, uh, I mean, all I would do, and I, I, by the way, I did that job. He was so happy. I got a bonus, a $10 bonus. He paid me a $10 bonus. Dude. I was, I was like, wow, he paid me a $10 bonus. You started bonus. there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then it built from there. But every time I would find the job, I see what they want, and I would write something very similar. And I would say, hey, look what I have in my portfolio. Now, I'm not lying. I really wrote it. I really did. Okay, so I'm not lying to them. It's not dishonest. I'm not stealing it. I'm just saying, look at this other one that I wrote. And they're always like, wow, there are these other really good copywriters with more experience than me, but they don't not have- Not so smart. <laughs> well, but, but even that if they apply to that job, they say, oh, well, look at this ad I wrote for a dog. A dog trainer website and the client says well that's cool but i'm selling beard oils and then i come in and i say look at the beard oil ad i wrote they say yes i'll hire you and that's sorry that is how i won all my jobs for the first year and i very very quickly i started out very cheap but i very very quickly raised that rate in the first year i charged 200 us for one hour and i had i got a long-term client who paid me every week i got a thousand dollars for one day one day's work in my first year. So I was able to use Upwork uh, very well. Um, and after that, I was approached by a very famous author in Australia called The Barefoot Investor. At the end of that year, he approached me, asked me, would you please help me um, write some copy? So I helped him launch his book, which now, by the way, it's the best-selling book in Australian history. Right, best-selling book in Australian history. I helped. I, I helped launch that book. I wrote the emails that that launched it. So I'm very proud of that milestone. It was. It wasn't all me. That's a very little part, but I helped. Yeah, but um, the product is. And, it was very good, and also your copy. That's that's the perfect. You know exactly. Much. And and basically, I worked with him for the next four years, and he taught me a lot of a lot of the fun style I have. I, I picked up from Scott Pape. He taught me a lot of the fun way to write because he does that too and I just really kind of exaggerated it and put my own twist on it mm -hmm. and make all these crazy stories and people love it so that really was the tra trajectory of my career until now how long was that five years yeah so the first year was Upwork and maybe a little I did a bit more on Upwork for the next six months but from 2017 until the middle of 2020 I was doing client work and I stopped doing client work uh, this year, basically, almost completely. I still do a, a little bit if I want to. Mm -hmm. I saw your graphic you sent by email and that was amazing. And, and, and then the, the other email you sent about your six previous months, maybe? Six yes. was? Okay. And I understand. Uh, well, so, well, yeah, that was 18 months, 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, everybody, and I don't like it. Everybody's like, oh, make a course, sell the course, get rich. And, you know, you saw my graph. You can make, yeah. I made a, a lot of money the last three months. I made a lot of money for, for a very small list, you know, in copywriting, like a list of less than 2000 people is very small. Everyone mm -hmm. else. Like, I know. <laughs> I have 200,000 subscribers, but you know, I still make more money than some of them. There, there was, when I did my Black Friday sale, there mm -hmm. was a copywriter whose list was 10 times bigger than mine. And he only made a little bit more than me. And I outsold everybody else because my list is small, but it tr they trust me and they like me and I have a good relationship. So that is way more important than how big it is. Um, but yeah, so everyone's talking about making a course and make all your money and you'll be rich. But what they don't say is, yeah, I worked for five years before I was making the course. You know, But you, you need experience. My... Exactly. You have to have something worth saying. And also client work is everyone says clients suck. And I don't, I don't really like clients, but it's important. That's how you make money. If you're a copywriter, you're starting out, you have to be good at working with clients. Eventually, eventually you can give up your clients, but yeah. you have to start. You have to do the time, as we say in English. You have to, you have to put in the time. Mm -hmm. but you have also you have your metrics and you need to prove your work is good if not how how do you want to teach something it's like crazy 
How's that? And I and I had this discussion just yesterday, and we were talking about this before. I met someone at mm -hmm. a cafe in person. She was very starstruck. She thought I was a celebrity, and she said she had the same problem. And now she said, "Well, how am I going to get people to listen to me if I don't have anything? I don't have anything good about me." And I said. Well, partly that's right. Yes, you need to have something good to say because why should anyone listen to you? But a quick way, a quick way to do that is to come up with, if I had to start again, I would do this. I would think, what is a really cool challenge that I could do that would make people talk about me? So for example, I have my wel parallel welcome sequence. And if I invented that, then maybe people would talk about me like they do now. But maybe if I didn't have that, I would say, well, I'm going to go to 50 podcasts in the next 50 days. And every day I will send a pitch email and I'm going to write about how many accept me and what I'm trying and what works and what doesn't work. At the end of 50 days, I will probably have some people say yes. And also I will have a really cool story. Hey, that person pitched 50 podcasts in 50 days. That's really cool. Or maybe you do it in 10 days, 50 podcasts in 10 days or something. <laughs> or you say, well, I'm going to write one sales letter every day for a whole month. Or, you know, I'm going to reach out to 100 brands in 100 days with and rewrite their emails. And I post it every day, I'm gonna post it live. Or something cool that you can do that gets people to talk about you. That is the fast way. If you, if you don't have a brand, do something like that, that is going to give you a brand very quickly in as little as one, two, three months. Then people will want to have you on their podcast. Tell me about how you pitched 100 brands in 100 days. What did you learn? You're now an expert. You can sell a product. That's the quick way to kickstart it. So that's what I told that person yesterday. Yeah, yeah. As oh, this is exactly the same. I talked to my student to the students before in my in my course and everything because they have to be different. S do something. Start to write. <laughs> you have to write. That's that's the first step. And whatever you want to write, write it. <laughs> It's like you say with the upward thing, I always told them you have to write, maybe it's not uh, the, the real client, but you have to practice and maybe you can fit with the, the they are seeking, right? And then you have it. <laughs> that's exactly, crazy. that's exactly right. And it's also why I tell people, start writing your own emails. Who cares mm -hmm. if nobody's reading? When I started, I had 40 people And that was a very old email list. So only 20 people were reading. I had 20 people reading when I started. Maybe they weren't even all reading. 10 people, you know, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just have to start the practice. And I would write every single day back uh, nine months ago. I would stay up late. It was like bedtime and I wanted to go to bed, but I haven't written my email for today. So I am going to stay up. And I'm thinking, Daniel, Five people, probably five people will bother to read this email. Just go to bed. And I thought, no, nope, I'm going to write the email. I'm not going to miss it. And it paid off. It paid off. That one email, sure, it didn't make my business grow. But the fact that I never stopped writing, everyone else I know takes breaks. They take days off. They get lazy and I overtake them. So, yeah. I mean, you can always... You may not be smarter or better or more talented, but you can always work harder. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's amazing. That's a big lesson here. And um, you learn everything about copywriting uh, with courses or books or what, or in the, you know, by yourself, self stuff. Yeah, so I learned a lot when I started by reading old books. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, I think in, in my app somewhere, I have a list. I can't remember what they are, but I have like 11 books that I, I recommend people. And, and it was a lot of the old classics like scientific advertising or, I mean, I've got a lot of them here, like how to write a good advertisement. I read all these classic books, mm -hmm. but over the last few years, especially this year even, I started to realize that a lot of what was working in the past, it does not work so well now. And everybody says that usually all these young guys and they're standing in front of Lamborghinis and they're like, oh, I, it's, it's all dead now. And I've got some really cool new product to sell you. Um, but I don't mean that. I don't mean that way. The old principles, yes, they work, but they don't work the same way. And 
everyone's the reason I say that is that nowadays everyone carries one of these, a phone. They have a phone in their pocket. Every two minutes, it goes ping and distracts you. It's changing our brain. It's changing our brain. We cannot pay attention. When you watch movies, you watch movies and you check your phone. You can't watch entertainment for one hour without checking your phone. Your brain cannot concentrate. So that's totally true. I am seeing there is a shift, a shift in the way people need to do marketing. You cannot just write this really long 10,000 word sales page. You cannot just send these long emails in very long funnels and think that everyone's going to read them every day and trace through all my emails in order. They're not going to do that. They are busy. They cannot pay attention. So I came up with my own philosophy, which was, it's more about over time. How can I do fun things over time that eventually get them to like me and pay attention to me and want to buy from me? And so a lot of that was taking the things that I learned in these old books and thinking, well, how does the world change now? And how can we adapt to that? And where is the world going in the next few years? I think this is only going to get worse. Yeah. Facebook does not want to distract you less. Instagram does not want to distract you less. Twitter does not want to distract you less. They want to distract you more. They want to ruin your brain. So people are going to have shorter attention spans. How can we use the principles of copywriting and change them so they work now? And that's where a lot of my ideas come from. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, how can I take those old rules and make them work now? And so things like the parallel welcome sequence is a way that I can make someone read a lot, but if they get distracted, it waits and then they come back to it and they keep going, you know, and it's the same with a lot of the things I do. It's just taking those old things and changing them for today. That's, that's amazing. And I love it. And I know people who spend a lot, uh, one day, you know, doing your sequence. <laughs> it's like crazy. It's like, I don't know why I spent one day doing this. Why I hate this guy. <laughs> 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 why <Yeah. laughs> blame him <laughs> so um how many products do you have right now for oh, that i am selling yeah or you're uh, planning to sell or... right, right 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 well i it depends how you define it i i have one little report that's the email copywriting compendium and i just wrote that in one day because mm -hmm. i needed a smaller one and that's really good by the way i like that one And I have my course Market Detective, which is, I spent nine months making. It's everything about how I do my market research. And other than that, I have my inbox detonator coaching and the videos from that. So it's really those three main products. Next year, I want to move into a lot more of them because there are a lot of areas where, I mean, everyone asks me, please teach me how to tell stories. Please teach me how to tell stories. How do I write an email? How do I write a sales page? Like I can... I can teach all that stuff. So next year I'm going to be talking about, well, how do I, how do I see a moment and turn it into a story? Because I mean, that, that is a big thing for me that uh, a lot of the way my emails work is seeing a moment and thinking that is how I would tell that story. So I, I'll give you an example. Did you read recently? I wrote a story about being at McDonald's and yeah. there was a little child, there was a little boy, he was sick and he was disgusting and I was trying to write my emails and he kept coughing on my children. Now, there are many things that you did not read in that email, but they happened in real life. So the children, his mother was actually there as well, but I didn't mention her. He had a sister, but I didn't mention her. Oh, sorry, his grandparents were there, but I didn't mention them. Um, I didn't mention some of the things that go on. And so what I do is when I see a moment, I decide what am I going to keep and what am I not going to tell you? So I'm not lying to you if you're reading. I'm not lying to you. But as a storyteller, I am changing the way that you see the world. And I'm only picking which parts do I want to tell you? Where do I want to start the story? Where do I want to stop the story? What am I going to leave out? And where am I going to exaggerate a little bit to make it funnier? Um, and there's all those subtle things that if somebody else tried to tell that story, they wouldn't see the fun story in it. In fact, and so what I want to do is take people through those moments and say, here's the moment 
and it doesn't look fun. Now here's how we make it into something yeah. fun. I think there's a, that's something that a lot of copywriters want to know how to do. Yeah, because it's so, so difficult to write fun because maybe in your head sounds super great, but when you write it, it's like, okay, it's only, you know, having fun myself with this. <laughs> Not everybody, no, nobody, you know, pick my, my, my sense of humor, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I see. I, maybe I will be a, a, your student <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> okay, tell me about your, your day how you write your emails, you know, your routine. Yeah. So I, I used to try writing first thing in the morning. I used to wake up at 4 a.m. and What? try and make it. Yeah. Oh, well, every, I usually wake up around 4.30. That's normal. I wake up at 4.30. That's normal. And I used to make my email the first thing that I write, but I found that was very difficult because I had no inspiration. Nothing had happened yet in my day, nothing had happened. So I wake up and think, what am I going to write? And sometimes it would take me two hours to write my email because I'm just sitting there thinking, thinking, thinking. So now I set a deadline. I want my email finished by 5 p.m. But I don't tell myself when. So I go through my day and I wait until I see something fun. Uh, so some people say at, at 10 a.m. I'm going to write my email. I don't do that. I, I say, I'm going to look for a good idea. And throughout the day, I'm writing down ideas as I go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll have a conversation with my wife and it's funny. And I like, I can see there's a story there and I write it down. <laughs> Sometimes my kids will do something. Sometimes I will read something or someone sends, one, sends me an email and I can respond to it. That's a very easy way to get emails. And usually by uh, around midday, I usually have an idea of what mm -hmm. I'm going to write. And, and so today, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have an idea today. So sometimes I have lots of ideas and I store them. And so today I had um, an, email, an idea that I had a while ago and I thought, well, I'll flesh that out today. And now I'm talking to you and I've had ideas just talking to you. I've had ideas just talking to you. And I'm like, oh, maybe I could do a different email for tomorrow. Or, you or can maybe talk not. about so, paella. <laughs> But I, I don't even want to embarrass myself because I can't, I can't say it right. Pa paella. <laughs> paella, paella, right. Oh, there we go. There we go. You're improving. Uh, You're a good yeah, student. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I wrote a Spanish comment in my other email. Es, what is it? Estas muy, estas loco. Or... Yeah, it's Esta like you're crazy loco. or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit crazy. crazy lady. <laughs> But uh, I will have these ideas through my day. And usually I'll say, aha, that's the one. And I'll go in and I'll write it. Mm -hmm. And normally it takes between half an hour to one hour to do mm -hmm. an email. Mm -hmm. And I always, 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 I have to stop this, but I always come back and I'm always changing it for the rest of the day. I keep, I keep coming back and read it again. I just tweak this word. I just tweak this word. And there's some people like Ben Settle. He's like, I write my email in 10 minutes. And it's number one, I don't believe him because <laughs> you know, some of them are really long. And number two, he sends the same emails all the time. He recycles them. I never recycle them. Yeah. So, um, I, I spend a lot of time. I don't have to, but I'm a perfectionist. I want the email to be really good. Every day, I want you to read the email and think, wow, that was so good. I don't want to just write a quick email and then walk away. I want it to be really, really good. I want you to say, oh, that was amazing. So yeah. I do spend a lot of time coming back to edit, to edit. Uh, I probably don't need to, but I want them to be good. And then I usually around 7 p.m., I'll load up the final one into Aweber uh -huh. and I will schedule it for the next morning. So I send the emails at 4.30 in the morning, my time. And the only reason that I wait is I tested this and I mm -hmm. found that more people read it. When I send it at 4.30 in the morning, more people read it. If I send it straight away in my evening, less people read it. So that's why I send them at that time. I tried it out for myself. But you programmed, right? You programmed the email, right? Yes. Yeah, it's programmed from the night before. If, even if you wake up at 4.30? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's like, uh, okay. I don't. But I wake up at 4.30, but I don't want to come out and press send on, you know, so it's automatic. 
and you um let, one is congratulations for your uh, launch you send these emails about, about impersonation of the big copywriters that's amazing congratulations <laughs> <laughs> no, it was amazing that. yeah i enjoy so much <laughs> so good so you know, accurate it's, <laughs> it's, it's so funny i i only had that idea on that morning and so <laughs> i i have a little course which I, I only sell sometimes and I recorded every email in that sale. I recorded my screen as mm -hmm. I was writing. And so you can hear me saying like, ah, I just had this idea. I think today I'm going to write five emails from different copywriters. I don't know, but I think, uh, I think it will be fun. So I just came up with the idea like that. And, and why, um, why do you record yourself? Only for because I want to sell it as a course. Ah, okay, because people sorry. like to watch. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. I hate recording myself. Only fans. Is your is your next it's, business only fans? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I never I pay for that. <laughs> I know I never want to um record myself again. I mean, it's it's so frustrating when I record my emails because and I have to tell people and I say. What I'm doing now is yeah. blah, 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 blah. And it's like being interrupted all the time. Just shut up. I want to write, but I have <laughs> to tell people. But, but for that day, I did record it. Uh, and so I just thought, hey, it would be fun. And as I was sending them out, you know, I was getting all these replies saying, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. Yeah. Actually, Ben Settle was not very impressed though. <laughs> I showed Ben Settle and he said, <laughs> he did. He said, Stupid guy. yeah, he said, I don't like fanboy things or something like that. I was like, it wasn't fanboy. I did it for five other people as well. You know, it wasn't just about you. Settle <laughs> diva. <I> <laughs> yeah, but he didn't find it funny, which is a shame because everyone else found it funny. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Definitely. Then next question is, um, do you prepare your, your launches or your launching sequence or in advance or you're writing, you know, da daily? I write everything fresh. I come up with it. There's so many people who they love the lifestyle of, I schedule the whole launch. And then I went on holiday to Fiji and I drank pina colada and I made money while I slept. Not me, not me. <laughs> I made money while I slept because I worked really, really hard that day. That's, and I'm in Australia. That's why it was while I was sleeping because yeah. then all you guys in Spain yeah. are awake. And but yeah, every day I turn up and I think, what am I gonna write? I didn't map it out because my philosophy on doing these sales is I don't, I don't think everyone's paying attention. Even really engaged people, they might miss one. So I don't wanna say, some people do this. They say, this is email one. This is email two. This is email three. And you have to read one, two, three. But what if I miss number two? Well, I don't want to read number three. So I don't write my emails like that. Every email stands by itself. This is my philosophy. This is mm -hmm. my philosophy that I teach that make every email stand by itself. If someone just sees this email, then they understand. They don't have to read the other email to know. And so if I do that, well, I don't need to plan it. I can come out on that day and think, what do I want to write about today? Now, it's a lot of work. If I planned it before, then I could just sit back and sip my pina colada. Or <laughs> make money. And he, 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 listening to the, the, the cash going down. Ka like, ka ka yeah. I, I, do, I do. I have to tell you, Marina, I have to, I have to tell you, I turn on the notifications. Yeah, on like me. Because, oh my gosh, it's just so much fun. <laughs> Ping, ping. Sprites or something husband. like. I'm working very hard. So I worked very hard for that, you know. So I deserve, I deserve a little bit of dopamine. Ping, ping, ping. Um, <laughs> it makes me sound terrible. But uh, I think that it's harder to do it this way, to write every day. But it makes better emails. Oh, and I have this discussion with people. If you plan something, people can always tell that it's not real. Like Ben Settle's emails, they're good. They're very good. I love them. I love Ben Settle. But I can tell when he writes a new one and when 
it's something that he just loaded three months ago. Mm -hmm. I can tell the difference. So I believe people can tell the difference in mind too, that I'm writing about real things happening now or something that's fresh. And it's not something that I loaded five days ago or a month ago. And then mm -hmm. I walked off to go and have my drinks. Uh, not everyone likes to do that, but I think people can tell and I think they like it and it's more interesting. And ultimately it, it makes more sales for me as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm learning a lot here <laughs> because it's, it's like a small sales page in each email, right? It's like, yes, yes. you're thinking in this way, maybe? Right, but I don't try and tell the whole sale in one email. A lot of copywriters do this. Mm -hmm. Every email, they try and put the whole sale in. So there's 500 words <laughs> and 10 bullets and say, just a reminder, you get X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. And nobody reads that. So I just say, don't worry. I'm going to cut that out. I'm just going to keep it short. All the information is on the sales page yeah. if they want to read it. Um, I believe it's more important to keep reminding people than it is to keep selling because, you know, ultimately the sales come, the sales came one year ago from one year ago. They've been reading these emails. They know that they trust me. There aren't that many people who are deciding right now. Oh yes, I'll buy this. Okay. They already trust me. And this is true for anyone. They generally already know if they trust you or not. So what you are trying to do is remind them before the deadline, remind them enough times because people are busy. If you send one email, they read the email and then their kid just fell over. So they get distracted and they don't come back. But if I send two emails, then maybe later on that day, they're sitting on the couch and they see my email. Oh yeah, that's right. I should buy that. So if I send a lot of emails, they'll remember. The trick is they have to be fun. If I don't make my emails fun and I send someone eight emails in a day, they'll kill me. If I send you eight emails and they're all, buy my product, eight hours left, buy my product, seven hours left, buy my product, six hours left, you would unsubscribe. Yeah. But if I say, here's how Ben Settle would end my sale. <laughs> here's how Stefan Georgi would end my sale. Here's how our copywriting would end my sale. You're just laughing. You're like, send me more, send me more. Yeah. More sales, people, please sell me, sell me. So yeah. that's, yeah. That's that's a funny thing because uh, many people is like if, if I'm not funny, how can I do that? You know. Okay, so you don't always have to just be funny. Now I said the word fun. You just have to make your email enjoyable to read. There are a few ways to do this. One is to be funny, but not everyone's funny. One is to have a really interesting opinion. I call this concept. I'm going to put this in a course next year, but I'll yeah. tell you now. I call this the key, the key of understanding. When you tell someone an idea, they take it like a key and they try unlocking memories in their past, their past experiences. And if it fits, if they take this key and it unlocks the locks and they say, oh, that makes sense. So when I said to you before, I said to you before that I believe people's attention spans are shorter because they have iPhones distracting them all the time. And that's why we don't like long sales pages now. Now, when I say that to someone, they say, hmm, they take that key. The key is that uh, iPhones have shortened our attention span, for example. And they take that key and they go back and they say, oh, yes. And when I read a long sales page last week, I didn't want to read it. And yeah, when I watch movies now, I do check my phone. That's right. And so this key fits. It fits. They say, yes, 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 that's right. I believe that ideas like that, that have the, the key of understanding. It's the common space, right? Sorry? It's the common space between the people, right? It's, it's this, this it's space is, we can share as people. It's that it's when, when you give someone an idea that helps them understand something mm -hmm. that never made sense until now. And when you give someone that key, that is when they trust you. So ideas like that one, if you give that to them, that is also really uh, valuable for someone. You can also have a rant. If something makes you really angry, you just rant about it. Or you make fun of someone who emails you a stupid thing. These are other ways to be entertaining. Hmm. Or 
you can tell good stories and they don't have to be funny. You can just tell good stories. So there's lots of other ways to, to do it other than just being silly. But one thing I will say is if you have dinner with your friend or you know, your best friend or your wife or your husband or something, do you not laugh at all? Do you never laugh? Even people say, I'm not funny. I say, okay, do you laugh with your friend? I say, yes, I laugh. Well, what do you laugh about? Find that, find that. The thing that you find funny and attract an audience that likes the same things that you like, that finds mm -hmm. you funny as well. And that way you can be yourself and you can be funny still, even if it's not a sense of humor that everyone likes, it's a sense of humor that these people like. And that's what I do. My sense of humor is very childish. <laughs> there are, you know, older people, anyone who's older than 40 on my list, they think it's stupid. They're not, they don't want to read my emails. It's like, this is ridiculous. This imaginary time travel remote and falling and there's giant lions. That you're so, writing oh, for is... millennials, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. Your, your target, right? That's right. That's right. And so I can be myself and I know that the people reading will appreciate that. So you also have to pick your audience and make sure that they appreciate the things you like. Otherwise you have to fake it. And I don't like faking it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do in my list also, because I embrace myself as, as I, I am right. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit goofy and I, you know, making jokes and this kind of things. And I always write in this way and yes. people is like, okay, but I, I want to, I want to do the same, but I'm not funny. And you have all the advices, super perfect to them. And then, The last question is not question, it's in a story because I have I know this guy he is here in Spain, Alvaro Sanchez, is uh, writing a, a newsletter, paid newsletter, and um, he's telling me something like, okay, he's telling me some, something like, uh, you have to know something about automations, maybe the technical things, maybe some program things, no code, but you have to know these kind of things to be a better copywriter. What do you think about it? Oh, when he says automation, what, what kind of automation? Like, you know, about? maybe this kind of sequence, you know, everything is like, like you know, plan and program. Uh, and okay. this kind of I things. Mean, <laughs> yeah, what do I think? I think something we were talking about before yeah. is very relevant. And that is that there's a lot of people who want to plan all this stuff in advance. And when you are doing automations, that's what it is, right? Yeah. You write this stuff well in advance. The problem is people can tell. People know when it's automated. So I don't, I believe that there, you can use automation like I do in my parallel welcome sequence. It's yeah. very simple. That, that's like it's, that's it's what not, I ask you. It's like your right, parallel right, right. welcome sequence is an automation, right? It is, it is. But it's, it's not a very hard one. Now, I said it's complex because Aweber is very old and it does not like, it's such a simple thing. It's just click the link, move on mm -hmm. to the next email. That should be easy, but it's not. <laughs> I think, yes, you should know how to do it. It makes you more valuable as a copywriter, mm -hmm. for sure. But I think you don't want to get too reliant upon automating things. One of the best pieces of advice I ever heard for this view is rather than relying on automation and segmentation, and that's when you split up your list into mm -hmm. different yeah, buckets, yeah, I know. okay? I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't segment my list at all, except the only segmentation is if you are in the parallel welcome sequence, you don't get my emails live. That's the only segmentation. And as soon as you are out of the sequence, you get my emails. It's very simple. Other people have like 10 segmentations or send this email to this one. I don't do that. My philosophy is make the email so interesting that everybody wants to read it. If you do that, then you don't need to segment because I don't segment my buyers and my non-buyers. For example, if you bought the product already, you still get the emails. Guess what? Nobody complains. Nobody complains because they're like, I like the emails. I want the emails. So yes, automation is a valuable skill to have, but 
you should really focus on being a better copywriter first. Because if you can write great email copy, who cares? Who cares if it goes to the wrong person? Who cares if it goes out at the wrong time? That's what automation is about. Send the right message to the right person at the right time. But I say, I have a different view. I'll write an, a message so interesting that it can go out to the wrong person at the wrong time and they still want to read it. That's my view. Okay. I have to say he's a very fan of you. <laughs> he he follows you not, on all your emails. I'm Hi, not Alvaro. Saying he's, I'm not, I'm not saying he's wrong. No, I no, no, no. I say it. I, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. But he's a really, really big, big uh, fan of you. <laughs> Good on him. And, and I, he's right. Like I said, it is valuable, but I think it's more important to know how to write great emails. If, yeah. But of course, if I didn't know how to do automation, I couldn't do my parallel welcome sequence. So of course it's important. Yeah, yeah. You have to mix this. But don't, don't, and... don't rely on it too much, is no. what I'm saying. Don't <laughs> okay. rely on it too okay. much. You have, you have many things in the store, I think. Your, your imagination is, uh, your creativity is so big and so original. I'm, I'm so happy to find this kind of thing so fresh in my inbox and every day. And that's something super valuable. And we have to keep this standard high and high. As a copywriter, I think. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Personally, I'm very selfish. I'm happy if everyone else keeps the standard low because it means everyone wants to read my emails first. <laughs> I love that. I have to clap that. <laughs> if they want to keep the standard low, I'm fine. Everyone else can be boring. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's, uh, the, that's a reality and I have to live with that. The mediocre things will we, they still happen every day and we have this few bundle of people who are trying to make the things more creative and creative and and original thank you daniel to be with me in this interview and accepted my proposal <laughs> instead of, of a review of my copywriting <laughs> well that, it would have been very difficult because i would have had to put it into google translate anyway <laughs> yeah that's why i never send you nothing because it's, it's, it's not the same, it's not, it's not the, you don't know exactly the, the people in the Spanish, you know, thing. Copywriting is international, but sometimes, you know, we have these little tricks between cultures and, and you know, the target is like this. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I hope you can maybe, you know, visit Spain and you can have a good paella. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if you're visiting us. <laughs> <laughs> When I can leave Australia. Yeah, now it's impossible. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Daniel. Gracias. <laughs>